you know, I have my real estate, but I, but for investments, I am all in in physical gold and silver because that's how they do a reset. And then thank you for this first part in which we mostly focused on gold and silver. Uh, I'd now like to keep talking about the physical asset class uh, and real estate in particular, if that's fine with you, of course. Absolutely. Absolutely. Awesome. 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 Well, uh, you know, you've said in, in previous videos, in some of the videos that I've uh, seen on, on, on your channel, is that you look at gold uh, as an insurance to a greater deal and silver as a barter, uh, barter material, mm -hmm. basically. Uh, but I've also seen your posts on LinkedIn. You said at the beginning of the first part as well that you're a farmer and, you know, you're building self-sufficient you're trying to be as self-sufficient as possible. You're growing right. your own veggies and, uh, and so on and so mm -hmm. forth. And I'm loving it. You know, I'm, I'm really fascinated by this. Uh, as I'm also really looking forward to purchasing a piece of land as an insurance for myself. And uh, luckily also another farmer from the private community on Discord has, uh, has pitched in with the question and, uh, about real estate. And he's looking to actually buy a house for himself to live in. And, and he wants to buy it in 2021. So what okay. tips and tricks do you have for someone, someone like me or someone like him who's looking to buy a piece of land or a house and become self-sufficient? Well, and, and in fact, I'm, I'm, I've been working on this for a while, but hopefully we're coming to conclusion because I too am buying a piece of property now. Everybody knows that we are in a property bubble. So the price that you're paying for that real estate is really, really high. Having said that, interest rates are really, really low. I would not take on debt and I'm not taking on debt that I, I couldn't pay off it's my gold. The strategy that the government uses, which is the same strategy that I'm using and what I recommend, is that you repay that debt with dollars that have virtually no value. But you've got to have gold to offset that mortgage. Because we all need to have a place to live and we all need to be able to be as independent and self-sufficient as possible. But if you take on debt that you cannot pay off, then you're going to be in trouble as the whole system collapses. Hmm. So, you know, you asked me what the fundamental value of silver was. You also need to look at what the fundamental value of gold is. I'm just going to make it easy for calculation's sake. Let's say that the fundamental value of gold, this is super low. I don't want anybody to quote me on this. I'm just making it easy for myself, okay? So let's say the fundamental value of an ounce of gold is $10,000 and you take on a $100,000 mortgage. Then what you need is 10 ounces of gold, which right now would cost you, what, 20 grand? Yeah. To pay off that $100,000 mortgage when the reset occurs because remember that's how they do it there's no other choice hmm. you know so when the reset occurs there is that window of opportunity in that case you convert that gold into those fiat currencies and boom you get that mortgage paid off hmm. and therefore you're not really paying this amount for the house because you're paying it off with dollars that have virtually no well in this kind well it'll be true all over the world no, no value. Would you, would you say that there is ever, there's a, it's a concept that I've been thinking about. Would you say that there will ever be a shortage of farmland with water inside during our time on this planet? Unfortunately, yes, because what I'm also seeing out there is big corporations buying up the farmland. So, and a lot of the, yeah, this is a huge problem. Uh, and so a lot of the smaller farmers, at least in this country, they're really having a hard time making ends meet because as we've seen through this whole COVID thing, the little guy does not have access to big pools of money. The big guys have all the money that they want virtually for zero, for nothing. Um, so I, I do see that as a possibility and a probability, unfortunately. Yes, I do. Yeah, I wish I, I didn't. I've been I've been thinking about that ever since I read that uh, Bill Gates is now like the largest farmland owner in in the country. Um, it got me into a lot of research, and I came to that conclusion as well. I just didn't really want to believe it, and I wanted to hear it from someone who's got a lot more experience than me in this. Uh, right, but but having said that, 
I have a half an acre here. I have a half an acre and I took out all but one lawn for my dogs and the whole rest of the property is all planted out for food production. And it's actually called a food forest because you're planting in layers. So I have like fruit and nut trees and then you can grow beans. You can grow things that vine around up the trees. Yeah. And then you can plant, you know, a eggplant, which is a kind of a bush. And then you go down to say an herb and then you go to your root vegetables, your carrots, your beets. Yeah. So this is really a great way if you have a small space to generate a lot of food. And food does become the single biggest issue during the transitions that we're in. And, you know, think about what happened in March and what your position was and where your holes were. My hole was I didn't have a bug out house, so I'm filling it. But the grocery store shelves being bare didn't impact me at all because I walk out my door and I've got plenty of food. I have chickens and I have fish. You know, we're going to be doing some freshwater shrimp. I have bees, you know, so. Yeah. Sounds like a dream. You know, the first time my mom told me about this over dinner was like, I believe right when I, I by the way, I moved back with my parents a couple of months ago. I'm, I'm actually very, very happy to, to, to see that. I'm, I'm proud of it. But so I was talking to my mom uh, about a year or so ago, and she told me about that food forest thing. And it was, uh, it's mind blowing. And, and it's also yeah. crazy self-sustaining because the plants feed off each other and they help each other. They give each other shadows and all, all of that that they need. And, exactly. Uh, <laughs> It's uh that that's probably a uh, you know a whole topic for a different conversation that I can talk hours on, but it's um it, it it's great to be thinking in that direction and doing something like that. But I was also thinking, let's paint a, a hypothetical picture here. Let's say that someone okay. someone entered the market at at a very bad time, uh, maybe before watching my videos, or maybe they did watch my videos, but they didn't listen to me to not buy all at once. Uh, <laughs> But, you know, they bought all at once. They're fully invested in the stock market, ETF, stocks, the whole shebang. Would you say that the long-term upside that they would get from moving their money from stocks to physical assets like land, gold, and silver, and stuff like that, would you say that that long-term upside would be worth the short-term pain that they would experience in nominal terms right now? Well, 100%. Because personally, everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with. But for me personally, I would really rather hold most of my wealth in an undervalued or fairly valued asset that is in a long-term positive trend and the least amount of my wealth in an overvalued asset or instrument that's in a long-term negative trend. And we, again, we get blinded because we don't understand that nominal confusion. So what we're seeing is the stock market go up but what we're not seeing is the purchasing power value of the currency going down. And as you stated earlier, so succinctly, you know, you didn't say a trillion, but I'll throw out a trillion times zero is still zero. Yeah. So we know that both physical gold and silver is undervalued. Farm land is not undervalued. Land is severely overvalued because it was targeted valuation. It's a big part of the economy and we can go into that. Mm. But however, you got to have a place to live. Like I would not buy anything for speculation. I needed a bug out house. I'm doing it. And I have my goal to offset the debt that I'm taking on because I'm not willing to sell my gold and silver to buy that house. Right. Yeah. There will come a time right now. Maybe it would take, you know, the 10 ounces, like we used that example before. But when they do that reset, I mean, look at what happened in Venezuela. And you saw spot gold go up some overnight, something like 3,300%. So what would take 10 ounces now might take a quarter of an ounce then when that happens. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and so, yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead, please. No, no, that's, uh. no, that was, that was my point. I mean, you just have to, you can't get caught up in this frenzy because they can keep it going longer than you would think. Hmm. But personally, I would always rather be 
two weeks, two years, 10 years. I don't care. I would always rather be early than one second too late. Yeah. Because early, I have choices. I have my junk silver. I have I have my pre-64 silver. I have lots of gold. I have I have a beautiful property. I've been working on the farm for 10 years. So I have plenty of food and everything. Probably a gazillion dollar tomato because I had to learn how to do it. <laughs> However, you know, I have my tomatoes. I have those things now. So the sooner you start, just get going. You know, my yeah. mantra is food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter. Because those are all of the things that we need regardless of what's happening in the economy. That's what we need to have a reasonable standard of living. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And you, you just said something that that's very interesting to me, energy. And uh, I've heard, I've heard you say it many times, but you don't own any stocks. Uh, and, oh. and, you know, as you're not particularly confident in the future of any specific company, I absolutely respect I'm a hundred percent confident in the future of the currencies. There isn't one little doubt in my mind and there's no doubt in the central bankers minds. Mm. Because yeah. every time they call for inflation, what they're really telling you is the currency is overvalued and they're taking it down. Yeah. I believe them. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, rightfully so. But but having said that about energy, though, I, I was wondering whether you would ever make an exception for specifically uranium companies, which is something that I'm very interested in, given that you know uranium miners are the companies that are basically supplying us with electricity, though uh, indirectly, but they still are. So what's your take on them? Well, you know, I, I won't own stocks until the dust settles. That, that has not always been true. It won't always be true in the future. And I think that we will figure out what these alternative energy sources are. I think the biggest problem that I have with any stock is that you know, you really have to look at the management. You really have to look at the debt levels. You really have to look. So there could be a phenomenal future for uranium or for anything else, blockchain technology companies or, you know, Bitcoin or any of that. The problem is, is that you can only convert that into, in this country, dollars, but you can only convert it into fiat. That's the real trend. Yeah. It, it, everything else can happen over here. But if what things are valued in goes to zero, then you go in and you buy. Mm. Or that's that's the way I'm playing. Everybody's got to do what they're comfortable with. And, and speaking about that, being comfortable with it, uh, again, I, I respect that. And I'm happy that, you know, I'm happy how you, how you stand your ground. Uh, yet, you know, uh, well, Talking about you specifically and about you specifically not holding any stocks, what comes up in most people's minds, I can imagine, and also I've also seen some of the comments on your videos, there are comments uh, about you missing out on this massive rally, yet you say that you don't really care about the gains that you've missed, but how do you deal with missing those gains like emotionally, mentally? How do you deal with that? Oh, that doesn't impact me at all because I know the truth. Hmm. Having worked in the belly of the beast, I understand the language and, you know, you have to understand where I live my life all the time. You know, I'm constantly reading all these reports from the International Monetary Fund, from the Bank for International Settlements, for the, from the World Economic Forum. Hmm. And so I really don't care. I, I, you know, I saw Bitcoin at seven bucks. Right when it first came out, do you think it was a coincidence that it came out in March of 2009 when they started QE in March of 2009? Oh no, it came out in January, sorry, January, and they started QE. I don't think that was a coincidence. I've read the white papers. So I don't have a problem because I am, I'm not a trader, I am a strategist. And so, you know, I build my position. And I would much rather put my wealth into physical, and I'm all in, I mean, I am. You know, I have my real estate, but, I, but for investments, I am all in in physical gold and silver because that's how they do a reset. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And I don't know when this market is going to crash. I have no idea. No Nobody idea. does. No. Exactly. Nobody does. Yeah. Yeah. But but I would say this. I would say this. For those people, I know that that's unusual. You just have to understand that I've been doing this on some level my whole life. So I, I'm just really a strategic. And I'm 66. I mean, so, you know, I've been around. I've seen this happen before. This is not new. And so, but if you are comfortable holding any stocks, then you just, again, same thing with the mortgage. You just offset it with gold. Hmm. So if your portfolio is 100,000, you make sure you got your 10 ounces of gold so that if this goes to zero, and I'm really more concerned about your being able to access it when you want to, not what it does in nominal terms. Well, then you have this to offset it. Yeah. So a, a truly diversified portfolio, when I, I wouldn't say that my portfolio is truly diversified because I'm making a stand. I'm very clear on what's happening. So, uh, and I don't care about the run. It doesn't, doesn't impact me. I, I do fine. Hmm. So, you know, and I mean, and I've been buying gold since it was on the spot market, which is a contract, not real, but like 235. Yeah. And I just keep buying it. And I bought some at 1900 I just keep buying it. I don't care. Nice. That's a strong mentality to have. And also a nice one. I absolutely appreciate that. Listen, Lynette, let, let's switch the focus here for, for the last part of this, uh, of this call. I've uh, really been enjoying it. And I know it may sound a bit funny at first, but out of the people who follow me, just a, a small percentage of women, a small percentage of people is women. I think like, I think like seven or eight percent the last time I checked. But, you know, you calculate that. Pretty good. <laughs> you calculate that on like the 26, almost 27,000 people who follow me, that's still like about what, uh, 2,500, 3,000 women watching me. So, it, you know, I, I want to address, uh, I want to address them as well. So what, what advice do you have for women specifically, or, or even perhaps oh. for, for fathers or mothers who have daughters and want to get them interested in, in investing, preserving their wealth and, and, you know, give them a nice head start in life? Right. Well, I, you know, I would, it's education and it's not education because this is what the talking heads want you to believe. I think you really have to understand the fundamentals and the foundations and find somebody like you that is doing this research that shares or somebody that like me, because I like to give links and help people. And, you know, it, it really is do your own due diligence. Don't listen to anybody Take what everybody has to say, think about it, but then do your own due diligence and see what feels most right for you. Hmm. I mean, being a woman in this industry, that's why when you said six, 7%, that's pretty good. Because when I became a stockbroker, there were only 2% that of, of brokers were female. Now it's much higher. And when I, when I first started at ITM back in 2002, you had maybe one or 2% of the gold brokers being female. So mm -hmm. I've always worked in male dominated fields, probably because my mother made me com competitive against my brothers. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but, you know, I, I typically find that really um, a you know, a woman has to work harder, be smarter, do more. But for anybody, whether you're male or female, you know, you really want to do your own due diligence and not take anybody's word for anything. Hmm. Take in what they have to say, but then also take the time to do your own research and form your own opinion and go, yeah, that makes sense to me. No, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm, I'm just going to assume, I don't know this to be true. I'm just going to guess that you're a role model for very, for, for a lot of, a lot of young women. And uh, I guess what, what they can take from you is stand your ground and consistency. You know, you said a couple of times that you started when you were 15, you worked in male. Uh, 10. Yeah. 10. 10. Right. Right. There you go. Just consistency and stay at it. It's going to get tough sometimes. I don't, I oh, don't yeah. know this to be true. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not a woman, but still it's, I think consistency is really going to help. Uh, consistency in education, just keep at it. It gets tough. It's mostly ball boys. It's mostly men, but still in the end, I think it pays off. And I think you, you're a living example of that. Um, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. 
Great. But, and, and I would, you know, I would agree with, I would agree with it and see if you do, if you don't do your own research, whether you're a man or a woman, if you don't do your own research and somebody says X, Y, Z, how do you know whether or not they're telling you the truth? Oh yeah. Or yeah. they have an ulterior motive. My favorite question is how many times can you be lied to when you do not know the truth? Yeah. So you got to get to the truth mm. and your personal truth you have to get to. Yeah. Not somebody else's truth, your truth. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you how many times you can get lied to because getting lied to once is uh, a coincidence. Getting lied to twice is a choice. Um, and I, well, I don't know. We've been lied to forever since the day we were born about money. Uh, well, do they lie to you right now? They don't because you, you took that in your own hands. You, you got educated. Right. You're now only physical, right? So it's, they're not lying to you anymore. If they were Correct. lying to you right now, still while you're 67, which by the way still blows my mind, but if they were still lying to you while you're 67 66. <laughs> or 66. <laughs> but I don't mind 67 either. It's coming up in October. Yeah. I, I was saying if they were lying to you on your 66, that's a choice. In my, in my eyes, that's a choice. You choose to be lied to. Uh, there, there's ways to educate yourself in 2021 oh, yeah. more so than ever before. There's internet. There's great, great people out there like yourself. So, yeah, education. I, I, do, agree with, I do agree with that. But, mm -hmm. but it, it is not, you know, I've had other people say, no offense, but kind of things like that, or, you know, oh, I'm not going to give them the link. They can do the research on it, blah. I believe in making it easy for people because you've got to understand that the governments, the central bankers, I mean, they hire the most brilliant minds in psychology and psychiatry to craft how things are positioned. They have, you know, the Fed has those FOMC meeting and you look at 95% of the meeting is about how to craft what they're going to say. Just 5%, just a little piece about policy. The rest of it is how they're going to present it. And 100% of the time, it's in like so many of their documents. They want distance between their policy and how we, the public, receive that policy. Mm. Yeah. And a great example is in cash, right? 2015, they wrote Breaking Below the Lower Zero Bound, one of my all-time favorite pieces from the IMF. And in there, they had an 18-step outline of how they would get everybody off cash and get, get them to do it voluntarily. But in that piece, you know, they actually said, we know how to do this. Well, you have to be smarter than them. You have to see what they're doing for themselves and they're buying gold. Central banks are buying gold, maybe not the Fed, but who even really knows what they're really doing anyway? So um, yeah, you have to do your own due diligence. I try and make it easy for people because it's intentionally made opaque. It is intentionally, that we are intentionally lied to and they have very brilliant minds that are designed to lull us into a false sense of security or nudge us, that's what they call it, nudge us in the direction that they want to go in. Yeah. yeah. I personally won't go to a store that will not accept cash. Hmm. Stores think they're doing a great thing because, oh, there's COVID, oh, money's so dirty. Mm -hmm. But what they don't realize is that is exactly the policy is laid out in that breaking below the lower zero bound being introduced by exactly who they wanted to introduce it because then you as the consumer thinks it's a store's choice and even the store thinks it's their choice. Yep. It's not their choice. It's the IMS choice. <laughs> so I, I probably have a little more patience for it. I, I find that I, I actually find that I do. Hmm. Yeah. I, I do think that's true as well. Uh, yeah. Lynette, seriously, you're, you're a true wealth of information and inspiration for me as well. You have very strong opinions and I respect you greatly for many things, but mainly because you speak your mind and you, you don't mince your words. And, and, and the fact that it's also all coming from, from decades of experience and, 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 and you know, not, not only sane thinking, but a lot of that too is even making it better for me. So 
Thank you. I know you're a busy woman. Uh, it, it, it's it's uh, 15 over 8 over here in Europe. So I'll leave you to it. But I'll not leave you to it before you've told me and the farmers watching this, how could we benefit from your, from your knowledge and, and make use of your services more directly? Well, absolutely. I do also have a YouTube channel and you can either search it as ITM Trading or you can use my name, Lynette Zhang, and it will come up. Um, you know, I write a blog that you can find on itmtrading.com along with all the links and all the pictures, but I'm pretty prolific and, uh, you know, I'm here to be of service and actually everybody at ITM, it's the way, you know, I've been there for a long time. We are a big family and we are definitely very passionate about being of service to people. And also, if I may add, I actually, um, we connected through LinkedIn, me and you. And uh, I also see you posting your, your personal blog about your tomatoes and all that uh, as well. So that's very Well, that's cool. Jacqueline and Megan and Edgar. <laughs> and so I, I do have people that do that because I'm not as tech. I'm great with spreadsheets and I'm awesome with PowerPoints and I'm great with research. But some of the other technical stuff is I let others do it for okay. me. Okay, great. Yeah, but that blog to me is, is also very interesting. I haven't had the chance to read everything, of course. I'll never, probably never will, but still a uh, great thing. Well, I'm excited because we're about to do some freshwater shrimp. Yay! Nice. <laughs> and big IBC tanks in my garage. Hmm. David Dubine, um, you know, what's happening with the weather. So I've, I've got indoor growing as well. Hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Awesome. Well, Lynette, Please take care and stay safe out there. And I actually do mean that. I'm not just saying it because I'm, I'm actually looking forward to a second part of this discussion later down the road. So do stay safe. I will do my best and you too. Thank, Thank you, you for having me. It's been fun. And farmers, you already know it, but <laughs> let me shamelessly plug it here once again. Please don't hate me for it. But uh, yeah, I and about 250 other people um, are at least trying, and we're trying really hard, to build the strongest community of investors on this court. And those are people who make money with speculations in the natural resource sector and then invest that money in income generating assets, uh, be that private businesses, uh, dividend paying equity, income generating lands, and stuff like that, and so on and so forth. And you can join us on this court, I really hope you would, and uh, yeah, that Discord server is generally a, a very safe and, and, and really a positive environment, which, by the way, you know that is, is a fact because the, the smaller half of people that is on there are actual paying members, people that pay to be there. Okay, so they're, they're not there to sell crap and, and talk nonsense. Okay, they are actual serial serious people right and uh the the other half of people that are on there the bigger half of people that are on there they are not paying but i have handpicked those people myself okay so uh and besides that besides the whole community on there you get to see an example of a dividend and a speculation portfolio that i have put together myself and you even get to see the occasional swing trade uh that i would do but you even also get to forward your own personal questions whatever they might be to serious people and, and, and you know, big people in, 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 in the space in general, people like Rick Rule and Ed Zhang and so on and so forth. So I really hope you would at least go ahead to the link, the Patreon link down below and check that uh, Discord server out, see if that's something for you. And you know, if it's not, I still would like to thank you for sticking around so long, watching this video. I really, I really, I really appreciate all that support. I'm 100% serious about it. And uh, yeah, besides that, I'll leave you with the simple message. Do not only look at the numbers, but, but see, see the numbers. The numbers.